So that also gets quite a lot more complicated than just kind of allocating the rent uh, over. And like I say, it gets a little bit complicated to figure the basis of the home and the out and then to and then to think about what that's going to have on an effect on your basis in the home if you sell the home and that kind of stuff at a future point. But that's the general idea. Okay, so now let, let's go back to the renting situation because it's an easier situation, I think, and then think about what if we had a loss and then the simplified method. So I've changed it now. So we're back to like renting instead of owning the home, no depreciation. We just got the, the rent here in our calculation coming out to the uh, 848 that's pulling over to the Schedule C on down below. So let's say that we had a loss on the Schedule C. So I'm going to go to the Schedule C and say, okay, let's say that the Schedule C is like a break even. Almost break even. But with it before the business home. So 120,000. So, so now I've got 120 minus the 120 and nothing's happening with regards to the the business use of the home because it basically restricted it and you can see that over here on the form 8826 same form as being populated and calculated but it restricted it and down here on part four carryover of unallowed expenses to 2023 next year operating expenses subtract line uh, 27 from 26 if left than zero so there it is pulling over let's say we had just a little bit of income let's say the income let's add like let's 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 remove like 200 here and just to nail this point home and go to the schedule c so now you've got this was the income before the home use of the office and now it's allowing you know the 200 here and that's bringing us back down to zero the general idea so you can see what is happening uh conceptually so now it's limited by the 200 and now the carryover is the 648. all right now this time i forced it to use the simplified method and you can see it comes out to be far worse using the simplified method so if i scroll down i said i just used the simplified method so now we've got the simplified method enter the total square footage of your home we said was the 12,000 and be the part of your home for business use is uh, the 300 use the simplified method and so on which i believe is just taking that 300 times the five dollars and then multiplying time times well hold on it's being limited let me go back on over here and say let's bring our let's bring our income back up so we can get a fair comparison here that's not fair that's not fair the way you did it Twenty thousand. okay and then so now we've got our income back on the board okay so there we go so now now the simplified method is the 300 times five right so 300 times the five dollars the 1,500, it's not being limited. The 300 just being the square footage in essence of the office. Now this is actually coming out to be higher because we, 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 put, a, we put a square footage of our business use compared to the full, the ratio was quite small that we used. So you can see you'd wanna do both of these methods because, because note that you would think that this method, because it's for the whole country, might work out better if you were in a situation where you were where uh you're in a lower cost of living place and you have to be under the 300 square foot because if it was over 300 i think it's going to cap it at 300 so for example if i put this at 500 for my business use then it still caps it at 300 right so that's going to be a limitation as well and because there's different cost of livings within the country, you would think that it would be likely that if you live in a high cost of living area, it might be better to use the actual. So now that I've changed this to 500, it limited it to 300. Let's go back to the other method. I'm coming up to 1,500 here. And if I use the other method, it would we would be coming to 1,213. Uh, so let's just increase that a little bit more. Let's say it was you know, 600, 600. And so now we're at the 
395. Go back on over and let's say the rent was higher. Let's say the rent was 35,000. So now we come to 2,145, right? So, so, and then if I go back on over and I say, okay, let's force the other method, which is, where's the forcer thing? Where's the forcer thing? This method, then that would still be capping me at the 1,500. So you kind of have to do, they tried to do the simplified method as if you can just pick the simplified method and go, but that actually makes it so you have to do the comparison between the two methods to try to figure out which method is the best now. So that's the general idea. You can dive into this in a lot more detail to determine, you know, how to exactly calculate the square foot and special situations like inventory, or if you have a separate structure that you, that you need to uh, get into, you can do more research on that. Or if you have a daycare facility in particular, uh, it goes into a lot more special circumstances in that particular uh, situation or industry, which is quite common, you know, business use, a type of business for the business use of the home. So you can dive into those in more detail and research them on the IRS website, irs.gov.